Hello and welcome back. This is session two of uh, personal evangelism. At the end of uh, session one, uh, I pose a question, are there any objections or any questions about um, this uh, presentation of uh, the gospel? And, uh, well, yes, they are. Uh, there, there are. I, I remember being in a group and I was sharing the magnificent truth of John 3.16, the magnificent simplicity of John 3.16. And uh, someone uh, uh, asked the question, aren't you making it too simple? How about teaching people to be good? So I said, oh, so you want me to teach people to be good? Yes. Okay, and so I, I asked him, I said, do you, do you have any uh, children? Yes, 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 I have a daughter. When she was a baby, did she, uh, did she help clean the house? Did she vacuum? Did she wash the car? Did she do any cooking or anything like that? He said, no, she's just a baby. I said, well, did she do anything to contribute to the welfare of the family or the household? She's just a baby. I said, you, you mean she's good for nothing? She, she's taking up space, she doesn't do anything. Why don't you just get rid of her? She said, no, it's, it's my baby. I said, well, does she cause any problems? He said, yeah, she kept me up all night sometimes, and, and uh, sometimes she stunk up the house and uh, marinated the uh, curtains and the carpet in her perfume. And I said, you mean you have somebody who's good for nothing and causes problems? Why don't you just get rid of her? He said, no, that's my baby. It's my child. So I said to him, well, if you can love somebody who sometimes is good for nothing and causes problems, and you can love that person, cannot God love people and accept them into his family who are imperfect? It's not a matter of being a perfect. Perfect. It's a matter of in whom you are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the light went on for that uh, fine gentleman, and uh, to this day we are friends. And so we're going into session two uh, today, and uh, uh, this uh, the verse about which we are speaking is found in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 10. And um, before we go into that, uh, today uh, in uh, the world, and I'm talking about um, April 1st today, uh, there is, uh, people are dying. Now every day without this virus, 150,000 people of the 7 billion people on planet Earth, approximately, 150,000 people die every day. If what we believe is true, and it is, what could be more important than plucking somebody out of ultimate perdition, having died without a savior, without the forgiveness of their sin, what could be more important than bringing to that person the, the message of the gospel, for God so loved the world <clears throat> that he gave his only begotten son, whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Now today as we look into Romans, it does not use the word everlasting life, it uses the word saved. <clears throat> and the question of course comes, saved from what? Well exactly what we're, 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 we're mentioning, uh, saved from perdition, saved from eternal loss. Um, the Bible says the, whoever believes in will not perish. Well. 
the corollary is so that some will perish. And, and so they're saved from perishing. And the, the magnificent teaching of the Apostle Paul, and if anybody knew the truth, it was the Apostle Paul, he, he magnificently says, if you do two things, two things, you will be saved. What are those two things? Well, he said, if thou wilt confess with thy mouth. In other words, say something, confess something uh, openly. He said, if thou shalt confess, if you will confess with your mouth, say something. Jesus is Lord. He is who he claims to be. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. If, if thou com wilt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that's number one, number one, and number two is, and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead. If you, be, if you will confess with your mouth, number one, and if you believe in your heart, not in your logic, in your heart, is Jesus Christ alive or is he still in the tomb? So confess with your mouth, number one. And two, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ uh, rose from the dead. Then, he said, the result of doing those two things is that you shall be saved. So if you speak to someone, uh, for instance, we ministering in the nation of Romania, speak to people who... Um, are largely uh, of Orthodox background. Say, um, do you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord? Yes, yes, yes. Well, do you believe in part that uh, God raised Jesus from the dead? Well, in Romania around Easter time, the greeting is Christus Anviat, Christ is alive. And the response to that, if someone says that to you, is Adevarat, uh, Christus and Viat. Uh, that's true, Jesus Christ is alive. So they do those things, uh, number one and number two. And uh, we have the, the scriptural authority to say to that person or those persons, as a result of confessing with your mouth, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, and believing your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And uh, generally they don't say, you know, say from what? Because they understand already that, uh, that uh, people are perishing. People are going into a Christless eternity. They die without a Savior. They die without an atonement. They had died without... Um, laying hold of the life preserver that has been thrown out from the bark to the uh, from the um, ship. Barca is ship in the Romanian language. A life preserver thrown out, and they refuse to lay hold of it. No, and so let us uh, practice and hone our skills to be able to speak to people, not about changing their church. That can be a dead end. The Holy Spirit can do things like that. Not about um, measuring how, how your good outweighs your bad or something like that. It's, it's a lost cause. Um, you'll never accrue to yourself enough brownie points to deserve being saved. But if they'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you can assure people on a scriptural foundation that they will be saved. Okay, well that'll do it for session two today. And uh, we'll go on to session three next time. God bless you. This is uh, Pastor Roy, they call me. Uh, you're a missionary to Romania and to the world, saying, God bless you.
I'll be back. <laughs>